Good morning, people. Uh, I hope that this talk will be a cool for wake up, but okay. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everyone. This talk is about uh, discovering uh, the de Firefox developer tools that we have uh, in all the version of Firefox. What are the difference with the other tools that as competitors and the other tools that we have as the web developer and many other things. So, first of all, me, uh, I'm Daniele Cresciaprate, I am the Italian at the Italian Hacker Embassy, and uh, I am involved with so many things about open source, and uh, I am a Mozilla volunteer uh, of Mozilla Italia in the case, and uh, uh, as Mozillians, we call in that way, I'm involved with too many things for Mozilla, but I don't want to get boring talking about me because I think you are here to listen about the topic of the talk. So, I think that we are here because we are hackers. We love to see how works the stuff, discovery, uh, disassembly, change it, whatever. So this is a screen doing a room maker fair of an old, we can call computer, I don't know. But it was pretty cool to see how works hold. Okay. And uh, so we love to see uh, the stuff of what's going on inside, what works, because we want to improve it, change it as we want. So the developer tools are our screwdriver, sonic screwdriver, etc. And very often we want to change everything. We are hacker, after all, we are there doing many, many crazy things here. So we want to alter and do it as we want. And often also to destroy. In this case, uh, this uh, cable, China cable broken a uh, motherboard. <laughs> I don't know. When I touch it, the motherboard turned on automatically. I have no idea why, but burned. <laughs> so we love to see how it works. We want to change as we want. And also, we want to break only to see what's happened. I also destroyed the uh, Internet Explorer t shirt that way, but this is another story. So I think that many of us know Firebug because it was the first tool. Uh, that enable us to, to interact with the browser and change the web page. And Firebug was the most famous because it was not, wasn't only for Firefox, but also for Chrome, and was the king for years. And was very important because it enabled us in the first era of websites that we can interact with the DOM and alter the page without save, reloading, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is that is a an extension and was one of the most extension that slow down your experience because it's Eevee. So and also the problem that is not integrated uh, natively. So many people continue to use this extension also today uh, that is obsolete. You cannot install now on Firefox table anymore because uh, use the old framework and is not uh, asynchronous, uh, multiprocess, blah, blah, blah. So you cannot install anymore. Today is dead. It's not developed, developed anymore, but there are too many developers that continue to use it. It's your choice, of course, but now we will see why you have to think that is dead. You need to switch to another tool. So there is also a documentation about migrating from Firebug to Firefox developer tools. That to, because uh, the, mainly the, the main developer of, Fire, of Firebug now is a Mozilla employee and implement many of the things on Firebug inside Firefox developer tools. So you will find uh, the most of the feature they are working on because the Firebug, as we say, was a huge project with too many things, but they're in, integrating many of the features of Firebug. So uh, let's see, talk about the Firefox developer edition. F Mozilla. Uh, release Firefox, we know. But the problem is that uh, as a long time to release a new version, and developers want the last feature to improve the development. So it was a problem because this table now requires like uh, four months to arrive, six, four depends on the moment, to arrive in the stable. So to await a new feature for the developer tools, you have to wait like an half of the year, and for developers, is too much time. So Mozilla released different version of Firefox. We have the Firefox table, the SR, that is for the enterprise, but OK. There is the beta, and there is the Aurora version. The Aurora is the middle between the nightly and the beta. Now, the Aurora doesn't exist anymore. 
Now there is only beta between Nightly and Stable. In that way, they removed a step to release new feature. So now to have a Firefox, for the reason I was saying 406, because now to have a new feature, now to have four months. And they said, we need feedback. We need to improve the browser. So who can suggest us report bugs better than developers that use Firefox? So they chosen to move, at the time Aurora, now beta, a branded different version of Firefox with a few settings already enabled for Firefox itself and few themes. So the Firefox Developer Edition is the most stable respect to Nightly. Of course, with Nightly, you have the most <laughs> updated fe uh, features, but you know, it's Nightly. Might be a day work, might be a day not. And we are developer, we need something that works. So it's better to use Developer Edition and Nightly for web browsing uh, as daily. So you can install this feature Firefox. It's updated daily, automatically, also Linux. I'm in Linux here. And as you can see, this is the Developer Edition. It's Firefox, but now we will see the difference between uh, the stable with the feature. Usually, as a developer, uh, I think that to see how much is powerful every software, it's important to see the configuration, because we can see how much we can change without altering the code. So let's see the settings. So I'm sorry that it's in Italian, because uh, I'm contributing, so we check also the translation. So I'm sorry, but I will translate for the important things here. And this is develop the settings of the developer tools. Yes. Yeah. I have to see. Yep. <laughs> it's better right now. OK. And this is uh, an iframe with uh, written in React that we'll talk to get later. OK. So this is the, uh, the settings. As you can see here, you have all the panel that you can enable in Firefox. So, so when you see, oh, this is missing a tool, probably because you have turned it off in the settings. So here you can have the DOM, that for me was one of the most interesting features of Firebug, because list all the DOM stuff happening, like in Firebug. And, uh, and you have only to enable, so you can uh, change, uh, because uh, when you start extension can be a huge list of tabs. So you can enable only the, the tools that you need. And also you can have developer tools, like here, this one, to add in the developer tools. Yeah, these are other features that Firefox Developer Tools has, like the rulers that now we will see. But I think one of the most interesting things is uh, the editor here. You can uh, alter the settings of the editor because that's built in an editor. And uh, uh, change the themes. For the people that love Firebug, there is the Firebug theme that's inside the Developer Tools. So you can change also this one. and. There are features, so you can try it without. A, I do a, a list of all the features. So we can close and com continue. Uh, one of the things that I saw when I say, "Okay, the developer tools," when I switch it from Firebug, they are starting to get interesting. Was uh, I say? Very stupid because we are developers, so we doesn't care so much about design, but. Always you have to work with CSS, so you need also rulers and uh, this kind of stuff inside Firefox. Oh, I have the spectre open. Okay. You, as you can see, we have the ruler and we have also a tool that's enable to you to do this and check the sides of everything you are doing on the page. They, are, they could be, as I can say, simple or not so much disruptive, but with all the tool set, we will see that it's very important because starting through the basis, the specter is the, uh, as we can say, is looking inside the engine of the web page. And uh, as I can see, I, re I write on this slide to remember to what to do because uh, there are too many things. So this is the specter. We already know. It's not so much different from others. One of the most interesting things that it's poor web, uh, also the tool, and it's poor interactive, and we have uh, a complete uh, uh, drop-down menu, uh, right menu, with other features that many came from uh, Fireback 2, like uh, the copy of the selectors. I uh, saw so many people that continue to use Fireback only to copy the selector of what they select. And also, uh, 
Uh, this one, I think this one of the most useful. Now I am interacting with the slides, so I don't want to change because I can broke and they cannot work. So uh, one, I think this one of the most interesting because it, often we have to interact with something that awaiting an action from us on the page uh, in this difficult respect. So in that way we can flag uh, in that state this DOM element that we are selecting with over, active and focus. And we can also change, adding attributes, uh, altering the attributes right here, or of course, uh, double clicking here, we can copy, etc. And we can uh, see the DOM. I don't want to get boring because these are the basics of all the web developers, so I want to see only the difference with the other stuff. And uh, uh, as we can see, we have a uh, uh, this kind of feature that are the classic of Firebug. The animation we will see now works, the font panel, but these are two basic stuff for web developers. One of the things that I saw the last months that are working on the developer tools team is this, we say, oh, there is already in Chrome, yes, but it was missing the developer tools of Firefox. So I say that finally we have also the support to see the as rules and reported with the flag. But I think that the time when the Firefox developer tools were raised it was this one. Uh, there is uh, my friend that works in the WordPress accessibility team and use Firefox developer tools mainly for this feature because uh, work with accessibility and we can have in the, again in the spectre, this one. What is, uh, in that way we can see only the event uh, uh, added on a DOM element in that way. Actually, I don't remember this already in Chrome, but in that way, we, uh, he can see what are all the events, because uh, with accessibility, we have to check uh, there are tab, uh, uh, press of the keyboard, uh, whatever. Uh, so maybe when there are too many events uh, with accessibility, they can uh, uh, duplicate uh, also with the using the press of the key. So in that way, he can inspect what is happening on the page, uh, and uh, we can see the code referenced in a, uh, in a selector. So it's very helpful when you see why this action is not happening in my element, because I can select in the DOM, open this window, and we will see is added. Often it's a problem of selector, but we can see also the code inside here. And the cool part was that initially when they released it, there was no support for frameworks. In the screen here, we see jQuery, because uh, many of the framework that we use, uh, and we do a callback, they are wrapper over an uh, event listener. So when uh, initially we cannot see the real code. So the inspector can navigate to the last callback and see what is the code associated to the DOM element. So I can co assure you that it's very, very helpful when you have problems trying to understand. Not only because you can copy and paste and try in the scratch pad, but you can see what is happening on the page. Now if we are on this line, there are a few, a few DOM events, but you try with an Angular app, uh, J Angular JS app, you can see there are too many DOM events, but you can inspect everything from here. So, one of the stuff that graphic designer loves and developers do is to show to the customer that we are working on the website. So, usually we use the stamp key on the keyboard, but like me, I work with three monitors, I have the, key, the screen of all the three monitors, I have to cut, it's boring. I want to select only a part of the web page from the specter, as in this, you see, in this GIF, we can select the DOM element with the right menu, we have do a screenshot of the selector. Automatically generate, as you can see, screenshot of the node. Though, uh, you have a screenshot of all this part that you selected in the DOM. Of course, you have also the button to do a screenshot of all the full page. Also, not only the view that you have, the VF port, but also all the page. So this is, helpful. this is very helpful when you have to do mock-up, et cetera. I, can, I alter a few colors with the spectre, screenshot, and I do access for four, send to the customer, and this shows the design. Very easy to do it with a click. This one, it's interesting. I try also with the archery, uh, the repo of the page, and this works without problem. This is the JSON source view. When you open a JSON in the browser, you will see a something that have no sense because it's not uh, syntax uh, highlighted, uh, there is no uh, indentation. Automatically, automatically Firefox do this. So we can expect the JSON of REST API, uh, JSON again, 
in Firefox and we have a few tools inside the search. I, can, I use it with the WordPress REST API that sometimes can be a huge stuff. I can filter without problem. Also with the GitHub API, there is the search filter and we can uh, interact very easily from the browser. We don't need to have uh, to download those, uh, another tool because we are already in Firefox. Of course, this works also with the local file. This is for, um, I don't know here how many people have to work with Photoshop, GIMP, but can, this kind of stuff. We are developers. So. Uh, the CSS filters are pretty cool because we can alter the photo like with the filters of a graphic tool. Now there is the support on CSS. Uh, Firefox has a dispensy view to simplify the access to all the properties, as you can see, of in this case of an image uh, and do whatever you want. This one was uh, interesting. Uh, I saw many people use uh, Firefox developer tools for education about uh, development because you can have the access inside the tool about uh, the documentation of CSS solely with the right click on the class automatically downloaded from MDN. So these are very helpful because save you to you to go on Google and again go to MDN, find the page, etc. You can do it automatically from here. So save you a few clicks on the browser. This is also interesting because now there are too many unit sites. We are European, so we have the metric system. We are very cool from this point of view, but there are also too many other metric sy uh, unit system like for font, etc. We can switch very easily clicking. This can be helpful when you have to try with the, to understand the PI, etc. What is unit size is in another one because the conversion is automatically. So. This is uh, uh, the drag and drop was initially on Firefox, now the results on Chrome. So it's not so much new, new feature. But you can drag and drop the element. I can assure that it's very helpful to understand, probably with problem with floating that kind of stuff, because you can drag and drop. As you say, again, there is the red menu. I've done, again, a <laughs> screenshot in Italian, sorry, again. And uh, uh, very often, the red menu can add the new feature, and we get not. Uh, I can say newsletter about it, but it's very it's important to check what is happening in the red menu. This is one of the most interesting because uh, when you have to work with CSS, it's important to see in, in the page uh, what are the select the DOM elements that are uh, getting action from CSS. We can highlight from the special all the element clicking on the this icon. So in the page, we can inspect every rules that we want. So we have problem with the, why this is red, because there is, the class is different. We can inspect very easily from here. This is uh, one of the most last feature, and now they have only Firefox, like powerful, that way was very highly promoted. Now there is the support also in Chrome, and uh, uh, I think also in Safari. The grid tool, what are grid? We know. At the timing for layout in HTML, there was the tables, but tables are not for layout. Next, floating, but floating is not very good. In the meantime, they released Flexbox, another way to do a layout of the page. Now there is a new standard that is the grid. The grid is a grid, as you can see. Uh, you can uh, configure uh, the element like a grid, like at the time of table, but with div and other stuff. This vector enable to use to see the grid that is hidden usually on the page and alter it from the developer tools. And this is one of the uh, features most developed right now and there are often uh, monthly updates that improve the user experience. There are also other talks only about this feature. So for people interested in grid API, uh, CSS API, look on internet, you can find many other information. This at the time was very interesting because we know JavaScript is cool, but it's low. CSS animation is very f fast. The problem is that I can have a timeline like with the video editor. Yes, Firefox are right now. You can see all the animation of the selector that you are using and like with a, a video, play and stop. This is helpful to understand why this is lagging, why, what is happening right here, and you can also scroll the selector. So this is very cool. And you can also expect the change of the property. Right here, we are uh, seeing what is happening with the opacity, because uh, for CSS, we can say change the property based on the keyframe. We can expect from here. And turn it on, blah, blah. This, at the time when I saw this feature, I say, OK, it's not so much cool, because uh, 
is only a drag and drop to see the position of the element x, y, z. But it's pretty cool because uh, when you work with absolute element, you can drag and drop automatically, change uh, the position, top, left, whatever. So it's helpful also to work with the strange layout that doesn't work as we want. And uh, to enable, we have only to go here and click here. So pretty easy. This again is for came from graphic, but it's helpful also for animation because we want maybe a bump. Uh, a jump, something that is uh, scaling, etc. We can have this interface when we do animation with CSS and alter the timing, the movement, whatever, in that way, visually. It's more better than doing manually, trying every single position on the cable. Uh, for this one, I prefer I chosen to show a video because uh, ah, the result of the YouTube channel of Firefox Developer 2. So here we can see that he's expecting a bootstrap team. And now this feature is in the developer tools at the time when we do this video was only on the nightly, so I cannot show. For that reason, there is a video. We can turn it off a class that is uh, in an element without alter the spectrum because we have the checkbox. <laughs> you can see, ah, it's stupid because uh, every time you have to write again, but I can confirm you that to you that when you have to work too much on this kind of this can save you too many clicks because it's important to us to save clicks, not anymore K press, but that's a click. So you have these right here. Now I can uh, broke everything. I think you can remove the class added on the element. Useful for prototyping. Now we have an editor. This is a long story because uh, now we can have in Firefox a CSS and JavaScript editor that can open, save, hidden file without need another editor installed. Of course, this works with the local file and not remotely, but yeah, it's always useful for prototyping or to avoid copy and paste and doing with the spectre. I will show right now what works. We have the style editor right here. This is automatically loading all the CSS loaded in the page, also of, uh, web of the extension or remote resources that are not us, like in this case, YouTube, uh, the YouTube CSS here. And we can write as we want, save, uh, and we have uh, other kind of things. Uh, depends, of course, of the CSS that we are opening. I, I don't think that is, uh, okay. We can also have the media. We want to go to the media specific uh, of the sides, uh, Right here, there are only the modality for print and screen, but we can have media query. I can click here, automatically go to the media print. When you have too many rules with the responsive, it can be very helpful to save your time. Here, also, of course, explain what are the rules. In this case, uh, this is not responsive because there are slides. But it's inside your Firefox tools. And you can create a new file, import from here. But this is not enough because uh, we are hacker. Firefox support the cable, the K, uh, the K-map of Vim, Emacs, and Sublime enabling in the settings. So for people that love to use Vim, I don't know many here. Here I want to start a flame war here about developer tools, but <laughs> you can enable inside your Firefox a user. You can see the hot, the K-map, the shortcut, whatever of these tools. This is source map. I don't know many here use uh, coffee scripts as uh, TypeScript, blah, 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 blah. They are pretty cool languages, but the problem is to expect in your browser because they are compiled in JavaScript. When you expect JavaScript to CSS, they are not the original ones. We have no idea what is happening. <laughs> I can debug something like that. So Firefox, like Chrome or other browser, use this standard this source map. So when you load a cof uh, coffee script, this case, JavaScript file, automatically it can open the coffee file on the right line of the method. So you have only to enable in your compiler and you can expect from here, as you can see. And I can, I can say it's pretty cool when you to work in a large code base with compiled stuff. This is one of my favorite tool of Firefox is the only one that remember the shortcut and uh, is the responsive view. In the meantime, it's improved a lot. Now as a preset of devices, you can of course add your own and set manually the sides. So I can you I work in a me and a little screen I can set a huge VR port from here. 
And uh, there is also, as you can see, there are two icons right here. You can do the screenshot or enable the touch events from here. But there is also a new feature from the responsive view. This is a responsive view in action with the old uh, graphic, but as you can see here, we have the style editor. And we can interact from here clicking on the media query and change automatically the size. So we all want to see the action uh, on a specific unit size. We can click from here automatically, stretch or whatever. So it's automatically, the cool part is automatically. This is uh, the most, I think, throttling was the most missing feature from Firefox to have tools uh, that Chrome uh, has. Now the results on Firefox, you can do the throttling of the network from here and see what's happening with the, all the rest of the tool, of course. So, it's a simple feature, but it can port on now. We have here a very fast speed. In Italy, it's not the same. So this is important to have to see what's happening. This is the console. Well, I don't think that there is too much to talk about it, because we know what to do. But uh, now we have feature about uh, uh, Ajax. Ajax. CSS, server flow, many of the features we can feature because very quickly can be very a long stuff of boring because reports all the uh, prefix the CSS rules or whatever. So it's better to filter what is happening right here. But I want to add this uh, slide because uh, we are developers, we want our shortcut. All the developer tools as a, like a standard of shortcut as code to use only in the console. So this work also in, in Chrome, not only in Firefox. This is taken from the documentation of the end, but this work also in Chrome. So uh, we are expecting the slides. We want to get this DOM element. I said, this is the slide that is active right now. If I do uh, $0, as you can see, there is not a complete. Uh, I can do the zoom a little bit. We see that this is the select element. So you have not to write the selector, etc., because automatically I can do it that way with 0. In Chrome, the, the, here the, the standard is different. In Chrome 2 OC, the previous selected element, you have $1, $2, $3 to see the previous element selected. In Firefox, it's different because we can do it that way. I select the element. We have uh, using console is the English version. Save in the console the element selected. So I can have two, three, four saved in a position that is not changing selecting. In that way, I save uh, the this one, go here. As you can see, temp zero is the other slide selected. But this is in memory, so I can switch the selection. This is in memory. I want another one. Using console again will be temp one, temp two, temp three. I save in the console. I can do as usual. Ah, I have to move the selection. OK. I can do uh, as in the sample. That way, I can interact directly in the console with the short, uh, like um, a cache variable, as you want, as we can say, everything also for dollar zero. And this is also in Chrome, so pretty useful when you are to respecting what is happening wrong. There is also the shortcut. There is the double dollar is a shortcut for document query selector all, dollar only one for query selector to save to you to write all this stuff because the problem of JavaScript is verbose. So you can save. One of the cool right now is copy. We have a shortcut method that is, exists all in console to copy what you are passing from a method. As an example, I want to copy the in HTML that I printed here. In I do copy. Now it's my, the clipboard on this uh, operative system. So I can do this. Of course, this is again Chrome and Firefox. So you can. Do it very quickly. Magic. And uh, you can also do inspection. As an example, I work in from console. I finally find my selector and want to search again in the DOM. I can do inspect. We have all the information here of the DOM element right here. There are quickly sh uh, shortcut to do the developer job. There is also this one dollar underscore that is to access the last value output in the console. So we are doing, as an example, two double, uh, plus two. We have four. We want, again, four without to do all the formula. We write dollar underscore, we have four, because save the last output. 
Now, the JavaScript error reported in the console directly to the documentation. This is a feature only of Firefox. We can see writing automatically when there is an error, the, po the link point to the, um, the end documentation of the error. So this is helpful to find what is happening, I have an idea, and Stack Overflow has too many stuff about this error, I can find the documentation. Developers love the documentation, but not to write it. But <laughs> the end is written from people that work only on it, so it's very complete, don't worry. <laughs> there is also the JavaScript debugger that now it's very, very powerful, now we will see why. And as you can see, this is interacting with, I think, a React app, no? Backbone, I think. So we can see that automatically the debugger can recognize a few different frameworks. The, the GIF is not updated, but now recognized also with the icon, recognize the specific framework. And you can see all the method of the class inside here, breakpoint inside the browser. It's a debugger, so we don't have to talk about so much about it. But the, the interesting part is, uh, we'll see in the, uh, later, this is the network. I saw many people that do CEO or uh, work uh, or as a sysadmin that was using Firebug only to see the performance of the website because they are managing the CDN. But developer tools as the network tools too. So you have no need to, only, to use Firebug for this. One of the interesting things for people that works with framework that we have no idea what is happening inside. So is it, uh, now Firefox can see this, uh, the stack trace of the uh, Ajax call. So when you at the console, we have the call. You can click and see what is, where is called finding the part, the specific function with the stack trace. It's a stack, uh, stack trace. So it's inside your tool. This is one of the most f interesting last feature. Again, there is the video because with the slides locally, it's not so much <laughs> realistic. We can see uh, that. Uh, this is now seeing the network per, uh, performance in the page. We see the cache version and the empty cache version, the status. So we can see what is happening with the cache in the browser and without caching, right, in the browser. So can be very helpful when you are trying to, to improve the performance of your page. The profiler is, was one of the first features of the Firefox developer tools. Usually I show with the huge uh, page that do WebGL animation, etc. but to save time, I will avoid. And the cool part that is special with the GL object of the browser, so you can expect is as low level what is happening inside the JavaScript engine. And you can export this uh, uh, output and uh, load uh, in specific tools to, to see the profiling. Uh, there is uh, one of KDE, I don't remember right now the names, but you can save this recording inspector later with other tools. The storage, the storage is enabled to you to filter and change local storage, such as storage, cookie, index DB, and whatever. Uh, I don't know many of you worked with the Europe uh, cookie law. At the time when there was the Europe cookie law, it was important to see, oh, I have cookie on my website, I have no idea. With this, you can see and also change uh, the value. It's helpful when you are working, as I said, with web extension or JavaScript application, and read and write on these values. The scratchpad is my, I think, the most favorite feature of the tool, because uh, now there is the test pilot extension that enables to have a scratchpad. You have a scratchpad right now, here. This is uh, a scratchpad. You can write your JavaScript code here, save, open a, a local file, save a local file, format for the index, so you can find a, a cool snippet of Stack Overflow. Put here, run, I say with run, is running on the page, so you don't need to use the console because it's very com uncomfortable. Here you have a scratch pad. So you, as an example, we have to start a, a web, an extension for the browser, I prototype here, and next I move to the extension. So you can save and do, in, like in the console, right here. Of course, you can use also as block uh, a scratch pad for your notes, but it's for developers. So, uh, uh, maintain. Yeah, re yeah. Remember what the value? Yeah, per tab. Yes. So, is a uh, is helpful for prototyping. In case you need something more, of course, we have the debugger that is an editor, so you can have tabs of. Uh, because I think it is not updated the browser, but you can have tabs 
of what is happening here. So you can have all the same feature with different files. This is again for graphic people, the color picker in the page, and again the rules, because rules are important. Rulers, no rules. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, this one supports the copy and paste automatically. When you click, copy in the clipboard. So it's helpful again. Of course, uh, one of the most latest feature is that now the Firefox developer tools support the developer tools API of Chrome for web extension. So now there is the, the extension for ReactJS, AngularJS, Ember, many others in the Andon's uh, Mozilla store. So you can download the use extension for developer tools. This is a little list. and. Uh, they are working. So you can install and use extension or develop, of course, extension for your <laughs> developer tools using a JavaScript API. So in the future, in the, I will see many other tools for the Firefox developer tools. This is a, a, an example of an extension. This is a, a, an inspector for WebSocket <laughs> done by the author of Firebug. So I can see it's pretty cool. You can inspect the WebSocket. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have to work with too many WebSockets, it can be helpful because WebSockets are too many. So you can inspect inside and you can install in Firefox. This is for develop uh, extension. So it's a part of developer tools. I have to do, I, I suppose I to do a talk yesterday about that, but for problem I didn't about web extension. But it's helpful to load temporary an extension inside your browser and develop with the tools that we already saw. Yes, yes, list also the service works here. The problem that right now is an old screen, so now it's improved also the interface. In fact, the interface is completely different. We have the special also of the single uh, tab and service worker. But right here, I am not uh, using service worker, but in case you have the list of service worker. Now, I, as you can see, I've done a zoom of this, the tools because the develop, Firefox developer tools are written in React. So this is a GitHub repo, a project completely different from Mozilla, this different team, and can work also standalone. And the cool part is that you want to improve the developer tools because I want to do a patch. I can download this and re auto reloading the version that are working inside my Firefox version. So I can patch the developer tools, downloading and loading from here. There is a video, but to save time, because I want to get boring, you can do it. We are, we are hackers, so I don't need to explain many things, I think. And as I can say, debug HTML. You saw the debugger in the screens. But the cool part that I say is our standalone. So you can inspect other browser or Node.js stuff from the same tool. For developers at the timing with Internet Explorer, uh, Safari, different version of Internet Explorer, again, uh, Firefox, Chrome, and the, the, the problem was that every different browser has different dev developer tools with different features. So the bug can be difficult because you have to remember all the features, how it works, maybe the OTK are different. In that way, we can use all the same tool with all the features that we saw in all the rest of the browser because there is a remote debugging protocol. So we can use also with the Android, uh, Firefox for Android, Chrome for Android, uh, Chrome for iOS from Firefox. In that case, from the bug HTML. As you can see from this screen, this is uh, opening the same app from Node.js, Firefox and Chrome, and controlling remotely with the bug HTML. This is our old screen. Now it's more powerful. Is one because it's an external project uh, re received too many patches. So it's very, very quickly with new feature, very, very easily. And the bug HTML was the first one. Now they're working on the profiler. There is already a rep on that. They are starting to migrate also the profiler. So we can use also the profiler of Firefox profiling for that stuff. Stuff. This is one of the last feature that was crazy interesting because the WebAssembly is a new, can we can say, standard. I don't know here how many people know about that. The cool part that it was a standard born from the uh, SMGS. And what is? We are developing in C++ or, or, or hacking Quake or Doom as usual, because Doom can run everywhere also in the browser. And uh, we want to run in the browser. At the time, there is mscripten. mscripten is a tool by Mozilla that you go uh, 
C++, C++ Rust uh, application compiling JavaScript. So you can run FF, MPEG in the browser, LibreOffice, as an example, use this tool to import in the browser many features. And uh, this compile in poor JavaScript. So maybe FF MPEG can be like 30 megabytes of JavaScript and can be not fast. So they created this new standard, this WebAssembly, that is in the middle. Uh, CS, C, uh, C++ is compiled in this kind of assembly that runs inside the browser. So it's more fast, it's binary, and you can interact also with other uh, framework. I know that uh, with AngularJS, they are prototyping using WebAssembly for AngularJS. So in that way, those browser support uh, WebAssembly run the WebAssembly version that is more, more fast. And I will show an example. Uh, ignore the audio, but the cool part is that here, right, why is not HD? A moment. <laughs> okay. This is a tool online, but the WebAssembly support right now is also in Chrome. So you can write your C code here. This is an example of the feature, of course. You can use the command line tools. You see the WebAssembly version right here, and what is happening inside Firefox or Chrome. So you can also write directly WebAssembly, but the problem of WebAssembly is binary, so it's very verbose. But you can, we can write C other tools, only with uh, our usual developer's tools. Uh, there is also a cool demo. I can try to uh, add a, I forgot to open, of WebAssembly in action. Uh, because uh, Mozilla, to show how much is the performance of this tool, taken and a uh, Yoss demo of using WebGL running in the browser. So the problem is that use uh, uh, like 200 megabytes of stuff to download because they are HD texture, but it's in HD. So in the meantime that is download, we can go over <laughs> with the next stuff. I will see at the end when it's finished. So we are developers, we love documentation to read, not to write. There is all the links that you can find about the Firefox Developer Tools documentation, shortcut, the YouTube channel of the main developer of Firefox Developer Tools, so you can see the last feature that is releasing. You can find out, so this is an uh, example to try the feature that I showed to you. It's like uh, a tour that uh, step by step, you say, now click here, open the tool, do this, and see what is happening. There is also an account Twitter, so you can find, okay, it started the demo. This is a, a web bus. I have an NVIDIA GTX uh, 750. This is on my laptop. It's a poor WebGL in WebAssembly. There is audio. When finished the animation, there is also an interaction. There is also the music, but this is not important. This is a demo for a iOS. So It's not very fluid on my laptop, but I can assure you, this, in a desktop, this DM, of course, is very fluid. But I think that the most to see the performance is easy to show. It's important to show this. This are in real time with the WebAssembly. So you have a, a game you can run in the browser. So the demo was very, very, very cool when they released it. But so this works out in Chrome. Huh? No worry, works out in other browsers, not only poor Firefox. So this is a WebAssembly in action. So all the application that you have, you can run inside the browser with the WebAssembly or compiling JavaScript with the, the other stuff. Of course, the cool part of WebAssembly is that you can interact with the other JavaScript pay, uh, scripts in the page between them. So there is another talk about that. But there is the documentation again. And uh, this is the end of the talk. I want to get boring because we are developers. We know to use developer tools. I want to close with Hotkey because you have the problem to remember them with all the different tools that we use. 
So in MDN, you can find all the documentation for every single tool, also the tools that I didn't show to you, and uh, demo of everything. So this is uh, the end of the talk. So for questions or for stickers, hey, I'm here. Question. Yeah. You say that uh, the user, do you use React for uh, yeah. the team use React? There is no incompatibility problem between the Facebook license and uh, the Silo one? Uh, actually, uh, not because uh, is. Uh, in another repo is outside, but it uh, seems that is not uh, uh, creating problem. I know that right now there is a uh, working on from Facebook to change the license because you know the Apache Foundation opened a, a huge discussion because I know also the WordPress Foundation want to integrate React. So actually there are no problem. And in case there was, Mozilla has a huge, very strong department about only to study policies. So there was, uh, there was fixed in any case. <laughs> Yes. If I have a line JavaScript with a script tag. Uh, can you repeat it? So I have a patch. Yep. And I have a script tag inside it. Yep. And five lines of JavaScript. Yes. I want to put a debugger on one of those. Yeah. Lines. Yeah, you can do it. Uh, there was a slider that I removed, but uh, in this. Uh, one of the features that support also in Chrome and other tools that your code, uh, you can write debugger is a specific uh, function for console that automatically stops the process of the JavaScript and open the debugger on the line where you write the debugger. So I cannot do it right now because I can broke again the slides or because also there is no much JavaScript, but you can imagine you are developing a huge web app debugger and automatically open the debugger, you can do the stack trace and see the value of the variable. I, I don't understand why I removed this slide, but yes. <laughs> Yes, you can do it, but it's uh, manually. So the, you have to open the um, here, do the stop. The here we have the play and pause. You have to do it manually this part. So it's better to save and run from here. But you can also expect from here. Uh, yeah, the f behind. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, you, sh you showed the JSON beautifier. Does uh, it also have the to, uh, for the JavaScript? Yeah, yeah, the beautifier, yes, is also for JavaScript CSS. So, because initially it was released all the, this tool for uh, beautify the code, the next they say, oh, it's a free editor, we can improve it. So, this is the first beautify works for CSS and JavaScript without problem. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, so, regarding React, uh, you had, you, you, at, at some point, you showed the events attached to, yeah. to, to, to a certain uh, L HTML yeah. element. Yes. Yep. So how reliable is that when using React? Uh, this is a good question because I don't develop with React uh, and I don't know what is happening with uh, stuff like that. But because the tool, the, the developers that develop the tools use the developer tools again, so I think that is the support because they cannot develop without <laughs> this kind of feature. But this is on GitHub, the debugger, etc. So in case you can ask here. So they have different uh, rely cycles, so they are very quickly to, re to reply to you. Any other questions? No, we have developers, we have no question. We have the documentation. 